So I'm pretty excited for this one. So today we are going to be reviewing the one and only Zemaboard. So if you're ready, let's dive straight into the video. So first of all, yes, what in the world is the Zimboard? Well, the Zimboard is an x86, not ARM, x86 single board computer. Yes, a single board computer, just like the Raspberry Pi. And this one is, you, is intended to be used as a server or like a home server. So I've had my eye on this board for a little while now, and I can say that I absolutely love and admire this board. So with that said, let's dive into the specs, the pre-installed operating system, and how this board actually performs. So as for the specs of this board, there are really three variants of this board. So there's the Zimboard 216, the Zimboard 432, and the Zimboard 832. So the 216 model is obviously the baseline. It's the lowest spec. So this one comes with a Intel Celeron N3350 dual core, dual core CPU and 2 gigs of RAM and a 16 gigabyte eMMC, whereas the Zimboard 432 and the Zimboard 832 both come with an Intel Celeron N3450 quad core CPU and they both have a 32 gigabyte eMMC. The only difference be between those two models is the 432 has 4 gigs of RAM and the 832 model has 8 gigs of RAM. So currently in front of me right here, I have the Zima board 432, which is the four gig RAM model, but I do have four cores, which is really nice. And like I said, this one's kind of like the basic, it's basically like the middle ground. So it's the same CPU as the 832. Just the only difference is four gigs instead of eight gigs of RAM. It has not one, but two SATA 6.0 gigabits per second ports, two gigabit LAN ports, two USB 3.0, one PCIe 2.0 4X, which can be used with expansion cards like this one I have right here, which can give you NVMe support on the Zimmo board. But as for display output, this board has one one mini display port 1.20 which can do up to 4k at 60 hertz so honestly as you can see there's enough connection ports for you to add an external external storage and even a gpu if you wanted to like this zim board really has tons of io possibilities the Zim board also is passively cooled, meaning there is absolutely no fan noise whatsoever, and the heatsink is really, really beautiful. I have the Zim board sitting in my room, and I'm able to sleep at night without being bothered by any type of noise or fan noise, which is really awesome. Honestly, though, the Zim board's heatsink, like I just said, is absolutely stunning. It's super stylish and well done. Looks incredibly professional. So basically, everything about the Zim board, in my opinion, is super, super professional. Their packaging, their website, their product. This this new company has done just a stunning job with really launching a really useful product while also keeping it really, really professional and beautiful looking. And I, I want to applaud them for that because as I've seen really a lot of SBC makers and they create really good SBCs, but they just don't look very appealing. They don't look beautiful, but this one really does look amazing. So let's go to what the Zimba board comes pre-installed with. Like what OS is on that pre-included EMMC module? So the Zimba board comes with the one and only Casa OS, which is a custom OS specifically designed for the Zimba board, and but it does run on other devices like the Raspberry Pi 4. So this operating system is built by the same people who created the Zimba board. So it is also really professional, just like the Zimba board. So it's basically a beautiful, beautiful front end to Docker, allowing for Docker images to be managed super easily and to be installed with a click of a button. And I can say this, I'm a huge fan of Casa OS, and you can trust me when I say this. I'm going to be continue using Casa OS for some parts of my home lab, even after this video. So it's really good. And I will dive, we will dive into it a little bit deeper in a little bit. But first of all, so the 432 and the 832 models of the Zimmer board come, the EMMC on them comes pre-installed with full-blown Debian plus the GNOME Decimal environment plus Casa OS. 
The 216 model, though, has less storage on it, so it comes with without GNOME pre-installed. It just has Debian plus CAS OS. No, no. And I personally would rather all of the models to come without GNOME because GNOME is just way too heavy to have running on a low-powered device like this. And if you really do want a decimal environment, I would have preferred something like XFCE or LXDE. But it's not a deal breaker because you can always wipe the pre-installed EMMC and install whatever OS you want to. But of course, this is just my preference because, I mean, you guys could have some other idea. And yeah, I will probably be wiping this, Debi this Debian from it and install Ubuntu Server onto the pre-installed EMMC, install CASA OS on top of that, and run my home server like that. However, the Zimba board can actually support Proxmox, TrueNAS, or really any awesome thing you want to run it. So that, that is really a beautiful advantage to having this x86 CPU compared to having an ARM CPU because... There's so much available software for x86 compared to ARM, and everything just works out of the box on x86. You don't have to tinker around like you do with the Raspberry Pi 4. Stuff is just going to work with this board, which is awesome. So like I said before, there it does. They do, they do sell PCIe expansion boards for this board. Like I have one right here, and this is by the official Zimma board sellers. And it's really awesome because this supports an M.2 NVMe drive and a NGFF port. So I can put this into my Zimma board right here, and I can have a full-blown NVMe drive connected, or I could even boot off of the NVMe drive on my Zimma board. There are also other PCIe expansion boards for sale on their site as well, and you can really pick up one of those that fits your needs best. Okay, so we have the operating system and the specs of the board out of the way, but let's talk about performance. So I haven't run into any issues personally. It's been running like a champ. So I've connected this 2.5 inch HDD I had laying around to the Zimma board through the SATA connectors like this, and it seems to work just fine. I formatted it through CASA OS and got it all set up, and it's really awesome to have my files stored on there and my operating system running on the EMMC. The Zimma board can totally handle having external storage like this, and it works perfectly through CASA OS. But as for the temperatures of the Zimma board, I haven't had any issues whatsoever. It stayed perfectly cool enough. Nothing to worry me, as you can see right here with P sensor. Currently, my temps are cool enough, and I haven't had any reason to worry about that. Like the heatsink is pretty large, and it seems to do everything really well. And right here, as you see, I've been able to run tons and tons of Docker containers on this board, and they all work pretty well. I really haven't had many issues where I've seen the Zimbo board load up. I mean, obviously with this 4 gig model, it is easier to fill up the 4 gigs of RAM other than 8. So if you really do want to run a ton of Docker containers on this thing, I would probably recommend going for the higher tier of 8 gigabytes because it's just going to work out better. I've also been trying to use this kind of as a NAS with that external storage, and you, you see I am putting this board through a lot, and the NAS did work. I was able to transfer files, maybe not up to some really, some people's standards, but I've never really experienced a high-end NAS, so this works out perfectly for me. And yeah, I just love how quiet and tiny of a server this board is. Okay, so I wanted to go over one more topic that some people may be considering. Like, should you be buying this SBC for desktop usage? Well, I'm just going to say that right. You probably shouldn't be buying this SBC to use it as a desktop CP SBC. It's not an incredibly powerful SBC, so desktop usage could be kind of sluggish. So the pre-installed GNOME interface runs all right, like you can see right here, but it is definitely not going to be an amazing experience. There's definitely going to be some lag, and it's just not made for desktop usage. Some lighter Linux distros, such as XFCE or LXD, would probably be a much, much smoother but it's still not going to be incredible. So no, I would not purchase this SBC for desktop usage. I would purchase this more for home server, home labbing, or some custom project like that. Okay, so here is kind of a little, a little overview of the CASA OS interface. 
So here, this is what comes pre-installed on the Zim board, and we actually have the link right here, which take us straight to Casa OS, which is beautiful. So I click that right there, and it should open up Casa OS for me straight in the Firefox web browser. So here we go, and I'm already logged in, so I don't actually have to type in my password again. It kind of remembers that, so you don't have to enter your password in every time, which is beautiful. And so right here, it, up out of the box, it looks like a really beautiful interface, as you can see right here. So we have our time, date, stuff like that right here. Here we have a little thing showing us how much CPU you, we're using right now and how much RAM we're using right now. Below it, we have a storage indicator, and if I had more storage devices connected to my Zima board, they would actually show up down here, or we can actually click right here and we would see the different drives like this, and you can see if they're healthy or not and different cool stuff like that. And then here shows our network connectivity, and that's basically it for the sidebar right here if you click right here you can actually remove them or keep them up like it, there is some customizability on this system itself so that is really cool as for the top bar right here we have our account which i don't want to log out so i'm going to leave it like that in settings you can change your search engine from Google to Duck to go to Bing, who wants Bing? <laughs> and in our language, we have a couple of different languages right here. I'm gonna go with English. You can change the default port. By default, it is 80, I'm gonna leave it like that. And auto mount, and you can actually go ahead and update Casa OS straight from here when new updates do pop up, which is super awesome. It's like a one-click update, which is really cool. And here we have a terminal, which, so if I was like on a different PC, I could go ahead and I could SSH straight into my system from this web interface, which makes monitoring your home server really awesome. And we have logs too right here, which has nothing in it for me. And here are the applications that I have personally installed myself. And a lot of these I installed through the app store right here, which is getting updated with every new update. They seem to be adding some new applications. Maybe not with every update, but with some big updates, they add some new applications, which is really cool. So let's say I wanted to install Radar. I just click Radar, and it gives me a little bit of an overview, and it kind of looks apple like iOS-y, Mac OS-y type of a, a cool interface like that. If you want to install, you hit install, and it installs it straight on your system, which is just so easy. So all of these Docker containers right here, you can literally install with the click of a button, and it's going to be running on your home server, which is really cool. But let's say you don't have, they don't have the application you want to install. Well, you can click custom install, and you can, you can go ahead and install this like a default Docker image. You can type in all this information, and you would get it running on your system. Okay, so yeah, we got that out of the way, but what if you have Docker containers already installed on your system that you did not install through Casa OS? Well, if you didn't install through Casa OS, it shows up at the bottom right here as existing Docker apps, and you can click it right here to import it to Casa OS, and you can find an icon if you have one. Right now, there is no icon for code server, but I click save, and it adds it into my home server, into my dashboard. So even if you install apps outside of Casa OS, you can actually use it in your Casa OS dashboard, which is just incredible. So yeah, this thing operating system is definitely still in development, and they're adding features like they seem to be really working on this which is incredible so i love cas os and i can't see wait to see where it goes and i would recommend it to you guys because it makes doing home serving so so easy so that is cas os so the Zima board does come in many different models but the baseline model comes at 119 us dollars and the 432 model comes around at $159. And the highest in the 832 model comes around at $199 US dollars. So let's start out with which one would I actually recommend. So personally, I've only ever tried the 432 model. So I can't really speak for the 216 model because I don't know what the performance is like on that one. But honestly, it's not that much more to upgrade to the 432 model from the 216. So I would probably buy just the 432 because those two extra cores for the CPU are going to be really useful and give you so much more performance. But would I recommend getting the 8GB RAM model? Well, if you think you're going to use the RAM, 
I would I I would recommend upgrading to that. It's not a ton of money either. It's forty more dollars, and you're gonna have four gigs of more RAM, which could be useful in some scenarios. So yeah, it's really up to you. But the overall question would be: Would I recommend this board at this price point at all? Totally. I would totally recommend this board at this price point, especially. Considering now you can barely find Raspberry Pis, and if you can buy a Raspberry Pi, it's going to be around this price point. And when you buy a Raspberry Pi, well, you usually need to buy some type of a cooling and stuff like that. And what? This board comes pre-installed with cooling. So this board is incredible for home serving. Just absolutely incredible. And I would recommend it. It is a beast. So, yeah, I would totally recommend this. So... Let me know down below in the comments, would you buy a Zim board? And what would you like to see me try out on the Zim board? I am planning on making some further videos with this board as well. So, if you enjoyed the video, a like. If you really enjoyed, a sub to the video would be super appreciated. So, thanks for watching.